talk to you guys about this ayah just a little bit. This is from Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 144. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ And Muhammad is not but a messenger. And it doesn't mean that in a derogatory sense, like we say, he's just a man. No, no. Messenger is a very noble term. But at the same time, it is kind of put, putting something into perspective. Muhammad is a messenger, and he's the greatest of the messengers, and he's the leader of the messengers, and he's the finality of the messengers. But it doesn't change the fact that he is a messenger. He's not God. He's a messenger. قَدَ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Many other messengers before him has pa have passed. أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ So if he dies, أَوْ قُتِلَ or he's killed, in qalabtuma ala aqabikum, will you turn around on your heels? That's a figure of speech, turning on your heels, basically means just flip around, turn around, start going back the other way. You know, if you're going to uh, get together, and on the way there that you get the news, oh, it's already done, they already ate food, everybody's finished, everyone's leaving, what do you do? You make a U-turn, what do you do? You just go right back on your heels, you turn right back around. Right? And you go back the other way. So that's exactly what it's talking about. That you're going along. Deen, Islam, Allah, Rasul, Quran, Dhikr, Salah, Zakat. Going along. But Allah is saying that if Muhammad dies, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or if he's killed, will you just turn around on your heels and start going right back the other way? يَنْقَلِبْ Whosoever does turn back on his heels, عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَذْرُ اللَّهَ شَيْعَىٰ He does not. Harm Allah in the least bit. Wasayajazilahu. Very soon Allah will reward Ashakirina. Those people who are grateful. Because that shows gratitude to Allah. Sticking with the deen, sticking with Allah is a sign of gratitude, gratefulness. Of course, we know the story, the backstory behind this. This is of course an ayah that was revealed during the lifetime of the Prophet. But at the day, the darkest day of the Summa, the day that Muhammad Rasulullah passed away, this ayah was recited on that day in a very powerful way. When we talk about the passing of the Messenger, one thing I like to do is kind of focus in on the individuals on that day. Because that's how you really see, that's how you can sense that pain. We know that losing the Prophet ﷺ was a tragedy. We know it was a painful experience. But key in on the specific individuals. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. See, again, we say companions. Sounds very formal, doesn't it? He was a Sahabi, he was a companion. When's the last time you used the word companion in a common sentence? So we don't really get a feel for what that means. No, no, so break it down. Break it down to exactly what that relationship was. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the Prophet sallallahu best friend. Best friend, I want you to imagine your best friend. And by the way, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and the Prophet sallallahu were best friends for over 50 years. How long? 50 years. The vast majority of the people in this room are under the age of 50, right? I want you to just think about that. Somebody being best friends longer than you've been alive. Just think about what that means. That's a lifetime. How close must they have been? Then on top of that, this is the Messenger of Allah. Losing the Messenger of Allah is difficult for any believer. Let alone a believer of the caliber of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who accepted Islam on the very first day. And it said about him, he had such convictions from day one. That the day that he accepted Islam on the first day, by the end of the second day, he had brought seven more people to accept Islam. So today, not only did he lose his best friend, he lost his prophet and his messenger, but his daughter has become a, a widow. Imagine how painful that must have been for Abu Bakr So he was gone outside of Medina to run some errands. He came back, couple of hours after the Prophet ﷺ passed away. He passed away, according to the opinion of the majority of scholars, it was a Monday. And he passed away like in the morning time, like around like 10 a.m.-ish. And he was in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. He had been very, very ill for about a week. For the last few days, he didn't even have the strength to get up and walk around. And he was laying there, 
and his head was in the lap or his head was on the chest of Aisha radiallahu anha like he was leaning against her and she was comforting him because now death was approaching his mouth started to get very very dry and so he wanted to do the siwak brushing the teeth so he wanted to do the siwak because he knew death is approaching I'm about to go and meet my Rabb but his mouth was so dry he asked Aisha radiallahu anha to moisten the miswak so she actually moistened it in her mouth and gave it to him and he did the, mis the siwak. And that's when he breathed his last. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was gone to run some errands. He comes back into town a, a couple of hours later. Immediately notices something's up. Something's happened big. I mean people are confused, people are running around, people are crying, something's up. He asks somebody, finds out Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi has passed away. Now of course I want you to imagine that initial just the sinking feeling it must have gotten. It's like a punch in the gut. Just imagine what that must have felt like. That he's gone. So he's in this immense pain. His daughter's a widow, he's lost a messenger, he lost his best friend. Somebody he spent his entire life with. He suffered such a huge personal tragedy. But he realizes people are going to need me right now. So he kind of composes himself. And he goes and he approaches the residence of his daughter Aisha and seeks permission and goes inside. The body of the Prophet ﷺ was lying there covered with the sheet. He removed the sheet from the face of the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, Bi Abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah. I would sacrifice my father and my mother for you, O Messenger of Allah. And he said, Tibta hayyan wa tibta maytan. You are beautiful in life and you're beautiful in death. And he kissed the forehead of the Prophet ﷺ and covered his face. And then he goes out now. He kind of dealt with it. He dealt with the situation. But at the same time, realized his responsibility to his people. And he goes out there and he gathers the people together because he sees that people like Umar are just running around, just don't know how to comprehend what's going on. People like Uthman are just sitting in a corner crying and silent, like literally incapable of speaking to people. It's a tragic scene. And he realizes somebody's got to step up and stabilize everyone. So he goes and he climbs up on the mimbar and has somebody call the adhan. Like get the people together, make an announcement, it's an emergency. Everybody comes rushing together. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu climbs the mimbar and addresses the people and says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad is not but a messenger. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولٌ Many other messengers pass before him. If he dies or if he's killed, will you turn back on your heels? Will you leave all of this? Because remember, whoever does that, he only harms himself. He doesn't harm Allah, he doesn't harm the deen. Deen will go on. Allah is ghaniyun, samad. He doesn't need anyone. But people who are grateful to Allah and stick with the deen and stick with Allah, Allah will reward them. And then he said, whosoever used to worship Muhammad, then let him know Muhammad's gone. But nevertheless, remember, this was the man that loved the Prophet ﷺ more than what we will ever know. When the Prophet ﷺ had to migrate to Medina, who did he take as his travel companion? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And subhanAllah, when they were traveling, when they were walking, they knew that there were people out hunting because there was a, there was a price on the head of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a bounty. So they knew that there were groups out hunting for the Prophet ﷺ, trying to track him down. So while they're walking, sometimes Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu would go stand in front of the Prophet and while they're walking, he would just move in front of him, walk in front of him. Then after a while, he'd start walking to the left of him. Then after a while, he'd start walking, switch over and walk to the right of him. Then after a while, he'd start walking behind him. Literally, just imagine you're walking, somebody's just kind of doing these little circles around you. So the Prophet says, Abu Bakr, what's going on? He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I know that people are searching for you and looking for you, and I'm worried. And so I start to freak out. And as soon as I see maybe like a mountain off to the left, and I think they might be kind of like hiding behind the mountain, might try to jump out and come there, I move to the left. That if they, somebody shoots an arrow, it'll hit me and it won't hit you. It's the man that loved the Prophet this much. But again, that leadership. He said, if somebody used to worship Muhammad let him know that he's gone. But if somebody worships Allah, then let him know Allah is everlasting, ever living. And they need to keep worshiping Allah.